in the slot, line up in a normal tight end position, and then who are you going to cover them with? Is it a linebacker, a defensive back? They create mismatches all throughout the game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinal, Teddy Bridgewater. To me, the best part of Teddy Bridgewater's game is his decision-making. Very smart, loves to watch the game, loves to analyze it, and he does it so well, he takes care of the football and keeps his team in good spots. Murray. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They go with Murray again. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. taken down just shy of midfield. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. Second down following the run. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. So third and five, defensively expecting pass. They've got six DBs out there. Here's Bridgewater. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. Ryan Kerrigan 
Leading the surge there, he drops in for a loss of six. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Play fake, Bridgewater. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And now it's third down. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. When I see Latavius Murray with the ball in his hands, I think that he's a dangerous player. He has good speed, good presence to run inside, nice toughness, and good vision that once he gets past the first line of defense, he can make a guy miss and turn it into a bigger game. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. Get ready. Play 90. Play 90. From the gun, Bridgewater. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away, but could not. So when the defense complains about having to do pursuit drills in the heat of training camp, Plug in this play. Excellent pursuit. Force the quarterback out of the pocket. He ends up trying to run for it. Instead, he goes out of bounds and loses yardage. That goes down as a sack for the defense. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Kirk Cousins coming on the field set and ready to lead the Redskins. But this year, it's been not exactly what they expected in the capital of the United States, Charles. Yeah, I think it's going to get really interesting in the offseason for both the Redskins and Kirk Cousins, is it not? It certainly is because for the last few years, they've danced the dance of, is he their guy or not? And what have they done? They franchise tagged him each and every year. Been great for his wallet, but it doesn't say, you're our guy for the future. Personally, I would go ahead and take care of that. I, I, I wouldn't take any chances on not having that type of a quarterback. And I think Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. If I'm Washington, I pay him. I make him my guy for the future. If they don't, there's going to be some other suitors out there. There certainly are. And there are going to be teams now trying to decide, hey, do we make that move for him or not? Many thought it was going to be San Francisco before the Jimmy Garoppolo trade. Now, there will be a few others, though, that will pop up. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. On play action, Cousins. This is caught. It's Ryan Brand. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So the offense has it first and 10. Running right with Kelly. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. 
Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And now we get a look at the starters on the defensive side for Minnesota. And 2017 for this unit has been a good year. Not unexpected because their head coach, Mike Zimmer, what are, what are his roots? Defensive coordinator in the league for a long time. He was going to build with defense first. And look at the different levels he has. Linval Joseph, defensive tackle, stuffs any run game. At linebacker, Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr playing at Pro Bowl level in 2017. Then you get back to the secondary. Xavier Rhodes is a lockdown corner, and Harrison Smith at safety, I call him the fixer. Wherever they need to fix something on defense, they move number 22, and he makes plays. On the run, it's Kelly, and the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. We'll head back to FedEx Field after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live, Charles Davis to my right. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Redskin football to begin quarter number two. They're facing a tough spot, third and eight here to start things out. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. And it's a fumble. And this belongs to the Vikings. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Let's go. Bridgewater now after the fumble recovery. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. That throw good for four. It's second down. Give to the fullback on the dive. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right. They're kind of played into their hands. So now it's the former Redskin let go by them in 2015. Kai Forbath on to try the field goal. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. 
And Forbath will put this one through. And the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if. On the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. Now it's Chris Thompson on the return. The Redskins offense now, they get set to take over here. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. Starts with Rob Kelly, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They'll keep it in the hands of Kelly. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. From the gun, here's Cousins. This is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. So on fourth down, the Redskins will call on Tressway to punt it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. Here's Sherrills. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And out now come the Vikings. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They go play action here on first down. And complete right side, the tight end Rudolph. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not only going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Let's go. 
from the pistol. They run it with Murray. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to FedEx Field following this short break. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. Second down throw for Bridgewater. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Give him three on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Third and short yardage, Bridgewater. Open man is stealing it's complete. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Hey, we talked about Adam Thielen a little bit last year, didn't we? Possession receiver, makes some tough catches, gets it done, and he's a homeboy. Grew up very close to the Twin Cities. And showing those possession receiver skills right there to pick up the first. down throw for Bridgewater and that is caught on the right sideline but out of bounds says the line judge the throw took him a little too far it's second down so that pass goes awry but to make a quick pivot before the game you and I were going through the list of thousand yard receivers this year some familiar names yes but a couple that are back on the list and then a fresh face yeah you're exactly right now you men you mentioned guys that we're used to Antonio Brown well over a thousand yards again no surprise there Gronk, he gets it done. You know, he, let's face it, he's one of the toughest matchups in the league. But Michael Thomas with the New Orleans Saints, really nice rookie season 2016. He made it legit this year going over 1,000 yards. And then you look at Keenan Allen and DeAndre Hopkins. Welcome back to the 1,000-yard yeah. list for both of them because you expect them to be there each and every year. And finally, they'll welcome to the club an <laughs> undrafted Thielen. free agent from Minnesota State named Adam Thielen. You're exactly right. What a season he's had for the Minnesota Vikings. down Bridgewater and he's got Rome and he'll slide down to avoid the contact and before the second down play we'll get a whistle a signal and a timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one so the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock Second down, Bridgewater. Over the middle, he's got Treadwell. Now a loose football, the ball comes out. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're gonna get a timeout instead, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And 
we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. To throw is Bridgewater. Looking for his tight end Rudolph, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13, and he returns it up just shy of the 20 to the 19-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Start on the ground with Kelly. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now comes the Redskin offense now as they get set to begin another possession. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. To throw is Cousins. This one complete to Jordan Reed. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I make a flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? This is Kelly, and able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll go again with Kelly, and the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. 
It's a loss of two, now third down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They have been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Cousins now to throw on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? on the counter and they go backwards here losing yardage back at the 48 yard line it's a loss of four now third down Brandon that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long they've had no success getting things going I think for the offensive coordinator he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different try some specials something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick started the Redskins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 14. Here's Cousins. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Daniil Hunter, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Tressway now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. Yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Murray. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. 
Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. In trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On third down, Bridgewater. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And a loose football into the Redskins. Have it, they do. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Paul. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down now after the pass completion. Play fake, Cousins. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Cousins. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact, able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. So now on fourth down, Jay Gruden will call on his field goal unit. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit him, Brandon. <laughs> So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. 
Now a play fake here on first down. Now he's hit, and Bridgewater loses the football. <laughs> Plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And they will not have time to get another play in here affair thus far. 3-3 three, three is our score heading into the fourth. So after nearly turning it over, new life here for the offense on second down. the counter with Murray and he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21 yard line and they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down so statistically both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going but boy what a nice play there defensively tackling him behind the line but you're right you look at the numbers neither side looks on track in the ground game The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and 16. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Throw left side complete. It's right. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Washington offense will be backed up to start this drive as they've got it first and ten. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. First down, here's Cousins. And Reed with it over the middle. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll hand it off to Kelly, and not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production, but how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. Cousins on third and two. Now to the left here to Reed. Cousins to his big target. Reed and the Redskins have a first down. And coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Tight, tight, watch, tight, tight, watch, 
Now Cousins. Brought in over the middle by Grant. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Well, so much for the four-minute offense. They were trying to reduce the clock, get in position to win the game, and leave no time for them to come back and catch them. And guess what? They turned the ball over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, they had it all set up for themselves, and they let it get away. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Bridgewater now on second down. The left side caught by Diggs. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move. And they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. 17 yards on the pickup there and the drive will continue. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. And at this stage in the game, every play is magnified here as we get down to the nitty-gritty. A handoff. It's Murray. <laughs> And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first down in field goal range already. first down and he'll take this one down near the 15 just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine I like it I like the call still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock I'm ready now for second and nine left side with Murray. Looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. And now we're going to get a timeout called by the Redskin defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. 
So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Vikings on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. McKinnon. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The Redskins looking for another timeout, and they get it. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And Forbath will put this one through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. So we still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but his second field goal makes this now a 6-3 score. And this would be the definition of winning ugly. Now you need to continue to ride your defense and hope that you can make this fourth quarter lead stand up. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This will be fielded at the six. <laughs> and nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock, so... Tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. Oh, they practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. Back to throw. And a pass complete to Ryan Graham. 20, 10, touchdown, Washington. Ryan Graham, 69 yards. And the Redskins have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Extra point attempt to come here. And he's got it as the lead is now 10-6. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Well, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Back to throw. And an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him two yards on that play. And it's a second down. They'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout. As he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three times in eight chances. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. He's back to throw. Open man is Thielen. It's complete. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. How many people are watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score, they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah, what looks like is going to be the game-deciding score, although a little bit of time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one play out. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards, and it's polished off by a Viking score. out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. <laughs> and he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Cousins to throw. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now.
So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Here's Cousins. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. The Redskins on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. Cousins. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stay on your feet defensively, and tackle someone. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. One last shot now for Cousins. He's going to let it fly. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off here the 32. And that's how this one ends in dramatic fashion in overtime with the interception. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here, coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory.